Hi guys, this is Rick from Guardian Weaponry. I'm back with a really quick video today. I just wanted to show you guys this, uh, the model 1926, the export model that I had told you about. Now, when I got it, it was all modeled up. It looks like someone actually spilled some type of uh, like royal jelly on the frame or something like that. It was just dots of in the white, and it looked I couldn't take it, so I decided to re rust blue it. And that's what's in here right now. So I use the use motor oil. You can use the mineral oil or kerosene as well. Um, I just happen to have this lying around, so I use that. All this information I got right from Mark uh, Novak's channel on YouTube, um, Anvil Gunsmithing. I think it's a great channel, and I really liked his philosophy when I looked up how to do this because I have a Winchester I just received from somebody, and when I got it. It was definitely re-blued, but it was it was uh, hot dip blued. It wasn't rust blued like it should be. And you could see the pitting underneath, and it just didn't look right. Um, so I decided to redo that. And during that process, I wanted to learn how to do the rust bluing, and I came across that channel. So then I ended up doing this one. The Winchester's not done yet. It's still bare metal. I'm working on the barrel. But I really want to get this one done in the meantime. So that one will be coming up soon. So in this motor oil now, after you um, do your final rust bluing and you want the rusting to stop, you got to stop that process. Otherwise, it will continue to rust and you'll get pitting and stuff like that. So you got to stop that process. So that's why you put it in the oil. I put it in. Actually, this has been in for like a day or two. I don't think you really have to put it in that long. I'm not too sure, but I keep it in here a day or two. You shouldn't really put any regular gun oil on it, according to him, with any detergents or anything like that for at least three days after because it has anti-rust compounds in it and stuff like that so you just i just keep the motor on i'll wipe it off now probably and i'll probably put a little coat of wax on it because i'm really not going to shoot these these are probably just going to be for display like most everything i have all right so let, let's take it out and take a look at it you'll see here it gets a lot darker once you put it in the oil if I wipe it off, you'll see just how natural it looks. I just love the way it looks, this uh, rust bluing. I just like it better than the hot dip. And you still got a lot of gunk on it, but you can see how smooth it is. And I still got some work to do on it. And I'll probably buff it out a little bit and even out some of these spots, but I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy the way it came out. It looks really good. I'm trying to get another paper towel here so I can wipe off some more oil. All right, let's see. Yeah, so I'm definitely happy with that. It looks factory, and it looks way better than I got it. It doesn't look bubbled. It doesn't look um, cheap. I think it really looks good. I want to do it so it looks like, you know, I didn't even touch it. So we'll see. This looks a little too new. I don't know if I'm going to put wear on it like that. I don't want to make it a fake, you know. That's not what I'm going for. But... Yeah, we'll keep it like this. The only thing I do have to fix is the barrel. It's supposed to be in the white totally. You can see it has some, it got some bluing solution on it, I guess. I thought I put, you know, I thought I covered it. I used a little just gun oil on here. Because that doesn't matter. I don't want it to, I didn't want it to blue. So I got a lot, I'll just polish that out. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, not big a deal. Yeah, not a big deal. Let's see how the magazine and stuff came out. I like that. I really like that. Very nice. Let's see. Let's check the slide. Let's wipe it down. Yeah, that came out awesome. Love it. Now, I only did, I think, three passes through of rust blowing. Three, uh, three rounds. So, covering in solution, in the damp box, getting rust, card, go back in, rust solution, damp box, 
rust card and then one more time and then I put it in the oil and then this is how it came out now you could do more I've heard people do seven eight you want it darker you can do it again but to me this is this is just about the perfect color it's exactly what I was looking for and this thing looks pretty darn awesome if I must say so myself look at that now you can see everything up top it's nice and clear crown it's beautiful threads looking good uh, and I fire blued the site like it is uh, original originally that's fire blued and the safety is also fire blued I think on the 1913 those are fire blued along with the trigger and there's another little um, in the trigger guard in 1913 there's another little uh, I think slide hold back button uh, lever which is actually in the trigger guard kind of crazy but that's also fire blued but on this the trigger is not and it doesn't have that other hold back so that's that we got two more pieces in here if you're still with me um, this long thank you very much <clears throat> appreciate it now I'm just starting out at this so I'm no expert that's for sure but I really enjoy the process and I think I something I really want to start doing more often if anyone needs um, help or not even help because I don't know how much I could actually help you but um, suggestions maybe stuff I've done that that's worked because this seems to have worked pretty darn good the Winchester that I'm gonna be doing I'm not too sure about because it's it's a nickel steel I guess alloy and nickel steel doesn't really take the rust bluing so great but I was talking to emailing with Bob Vesey who is the I guess owner creator sells the rust bluing solution that I use and he said that you can etch um, if the nickel steel or I guess any steel that's it's giving me a little bit of a problem you can etch it with muriatic acid which is basically, I think, a diluted hydrochloric acid. Uh, you could etch it with that, and it should take it much better. I'm going to try it first without doing the um, muriatic, and then if it doesn't work, we'll try it. So this mag, I just noticed in here, if you look inside at the spring, you probably can't really tell, but it, it looks like it was fire blued as well, and you can see that bluish-purple color to it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize they did that. No markings really. Actually, there is a sour, I think, with the caliber. So, yeah, 765. Uh, right there at the bottom. And that looks nice. Now, before, you could, just the way the magazine was, you couldn't really uh, see that so well. And you can see there's still some marks here and here. You know, it doesn't, it wasn't going for 100% new. I just wanted it to be protected. All over to me if you left it like that I mean yeah, it's, I guess historically correct but historically correct because someone didn't take care of it and something happened to it you know if it was kept perfect and someone had cared for it correctly the whole time you wouldn't have those marks you wouldn't have that rust and patina and those things and to me that's something that's just lack of maintenance like Mark really preaches and he's, he's right so this stuff here, this rust blue is is great. I'll buy every gun I could find, an expensive gun, and rust blue them all day long and make the most beautiful just to save them. So that's the way I look at it, and I enjoy it. So, All right, last piece. We are at the just the cap. This is the takedown cap that you unscrew to pull the slide off. Kind of like the way that looks. It's pretty cool. Sorry, I'm going out of frame. But look at that. Look at that, the back of that. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, you can see, really see on this how good it comes out. The crown uh, over end really pops now. I can't wait to see it against the rust, uh, against the uh, fire blued sight and safety lever. I think that's going to look so cool. All right, so that's that. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be posting another full video of the whole process that I did with the Arasaka uh, Type 99. So that should be coming up soon once I edit it put it together. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please, any questions or uh, comments, stuff like that, leave down below. And I uh, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Take care.